Steve, thank you for the invitation here to the Engineering Technology Group today. Um, you are now a, a senior member of the management team here and we often come and talk to you about your Nakamura's, your Quasars and all the products that you supply. Um, but sometimes we, or in fact we don't, get under the skin of ETG and maybe find out a little bit more about the journey of the purchase of the machine and maybe what engineers are really interested in as well, which is how you can support them once they've purchased a product. So maybe you could walk us through that process. Tell us about what happens here at ETG. So this is our headquarters. Um, it's quite often in the market, everybody, everybody knows, the sales guy sells the first machine. Um, the machines rolling on from that is all from the backup and support. And that's the experience that we look for from, from our customers. How frequent are these guys called into play? I mean, is every machine purchase uh, go through the pre-sales department or do you often sell machines without them being involved? No, generally, generally now speaking, because of the skills gap in the market, which is obviously another avenue that we're, we're exploring, um, the pre-sales guys are needed to go in with the customer and recommend the right machine for the right application and, and, and put uh, infrastructure into place, hence why it's now headed up by, by Martin Price. The operations division, right. um, yeah. everything from service um, through to technical, yeah. project management, turnkeys. So if you had a project, it would, it, naturally it would come through this department. And then is this support for, for, um, for Martin as well? So we have two guys dedicated to pre-sales, supporting um, the sales guys. Um, one, Gordon Coates heading up the turning, and Andy Belcher heading up the prismatic. And they are solely time is spent um, project turnkeys, visiting the customers. That can be anything from an entry three-axis mill all the way up to a twin spindle, twin turret. And you've got quite a team in that department as well, I believe. Yeah, so we have um, a number of ladies and, and gents that sit on the front desk taking those service calls as, the, as they come into the office and then, then spread them out into the, to the rest of the field. Um, How and do you monitor all that as well though, because that's an integral part, isn't it? Do you have some kind of system in place that you, you know where people are at what time so you can be efficient with your engineers? Yeah, we have a live system that's up to date. So all the guys that are, are allocated to a particular job, we know hour by hour what, what, what they will be allocated to. We know where all the guys are located customer-wise. We can do that remotely. It doesn't need the girls to ring up, ring up with the engineer and say how long will you be on the job, whereabouts are you. We can do all this remotely. So when we have another call come into the office, we can accurately say to them, we have an engineer 10 miles away and he'll be with you in, 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 in 30 minutes. It all sounds very good, but do you have a way of analysing how good your response is? I.e., can you tell me that you know for every call you have, you're there within a day, two days, you've got a 98% um, you know, success rate on call outs, you must have some stats. Yeah, so generally speaking, we're, we're a turnkey provider. When you're a turnkey provider, that's what you have to sign up to. Um, so we aim to respond within 24 hours. We aim to be on site within, within 48 hours. Um, we have stock um, held throughout the back. We've got three Cardex systems where we hold spares and spindles. Um, so as, as a turnkey provider, that, that's the structure and the infrastructure that you have to have in place. I want to challenge you as well, Steve, because once a machine has gone in, the most important thing, as you alluded to at the start, is that the salesman sells the first one, but the support and the service sells the second. How good is ETG in that area? It's been our focus for the last 18 months. Martin Dahl takes his uh, responsibilities as managing director and sat within the service camp. Here, so we've got our group managing director, Martin. MD. Morning. Morning, Martin. So Martin would, uh, would steer the ship, essentially. Carry on working, mate. Just do that. Thank you. Alright, how are you? And then following through from um, yeah, five sales times. office, um, we step into internal in sales. Um, so we've got all the, the, the support um, driven out there. So and then obviously in, in internal sales from when it comes through to order the project carries project goes out into the workshop when, when things are then PDI'd and checked. And when we come out of the service and support department, Steve, going onto the shop floor, it's very evident there's lots of machines going through and projects happening. This is a good place for your customers to come, isn't it, to see the progress of their projects? Oh, definitely. I mean, typically, example that we've got going through now, we've got the Chiron and we've got a Quasar and a Nakamura. So all, all projects, all the turnkey elements are all on, on, on different, different levels. You, you can't say that the, the Chiron is a higher level to a Quasar because it, the, same, the same turnkey means just as much to that customer. 
And it's very evident, Steve, that the engineering technology group in recent years has gone through some tremendous growth uh, in output of machines, in outputs of solutions. Have you seen any impact coming into 2019 on, uh, on the market um, as a result of what's happening uh, politically around the UK and Europe? The only word you missed out was you were touching on there was Brexit, but you only have to look around you, Paul, for the, for the projects that we're seeing that goes goes through the through the door. Brexit for us is just a it's just a white noise. And then on to your brands. What makes this business tick? Just give us a very quick overview for people that haven't heard of ETG before of the machine tools that you supply here, Steve. So we've got Chiron, Chiron Berker, so a very high-end um, five-axis. Um, three axis uh, multitasking mill, uh, multitasking lathes, we have Nakamura Tome, um, the Quasar Bridgeport range and Hardinge Bridgeport range, um, anything from a 300 size um, three axis through to horizontal pallet changes, um, Bavius, uh, horizontal and gantry mills um, targeted for the aerospace industry. You mentioned a good word there, targeted. Who is your target audience with such a wide range of machines? And is there a, is there a, a possibility that ETG is a, a jack of all trades and master of none? Not at all, Paul. The, you know, the, the range that we have, we have the largest permutation of machine tools within the market. Um, that allows us to, to go out and target. Um, we all see a buoyancy in oil, oil and gas aerospace, automation, um, automotive, and, and we have the facility to be able to adapt our model um, to which the, which the economy is pushing us towards. What's the future in 2019? Keep in touch, you'll see.